Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to ABB India Limited Q4 October to December quarter and full year CY 2023 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded and any unauthorized recording of this call is strictly prohibited. The recording will be made available on the company's and SEBI's website subsequently. I now hand the conference over to Mr. T. K. Sridhar, Chief Financial Officer of ABB India Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Shri. <clears throat> A very good morning to all of you. Thank you for joining this uh, Q4 and uh, full year results call. I think uh, we are in Nashik today, right? From where we have we have the entire board as well as the management team over here. So along with me on the call uh, is Mr. Sanjeev Sharma, the country managing director, and I also have in person Ganesh Kotawadi, the head of the location in Nashik over here, and also on the call I have Mr. Sanjeev Arora, uh, who leads the motion division, and then we also have uh, uh, Suprata Karmarko, who is the robotics uh, business. Uh, we, we are not able to uh, <clears throat> have Balaji in because of customer requirements where he is traveling. So, but we will try to make sure that we are able to access the, the calls which pertain to process automation as well. So, <clears throat> so I think it's a good time now to uh, go to the presentation, what we have already uploaded on the uh, website. So, I will hand it over to Sanjeev to take us through the uh, business highlights now. Uh, thank you, Sridhar. Uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, thanks for joining this call. And again, I recognize uh, our host, uh, uh, you know, Ganesh Kothavade, who is hosting us. He leads uh, the, uh, the largest business we have in the country, which is electrification distribution. And also, we have integrated facility here in Nashik. Very good sustainability uh, credentials. And the board, when he was they were here yesterday, they were quite impressed in terms of how our facilities work and how well our teams are performing in business results as well. Thank you, Manish. Thanks for hosting us. Now, with respect to uh, quarter four and uh, full year last year, um, uh, we talk about it, but just as a reminder, uh, just to again anchor how ABB India operates and what ABB India structure is, we have four distinct business areas, uh, electrification, which largely deals with power distribution, both at the medium voltage and low voltage level, uh, and also installation pro products and some UPS services. So these are the typical uh, products which go into the, uh, you know, increasing the uh, reliability of power distribution in the cities, industrial plants, infrastructure projects, and also making sure that the buildings where they are deployed, they are more energy efficient and they have a better energy uh, footprint. Motion division, which largely deals with the low, low voltage, medium voltage motors and drives. It's an energy efficiency portfolio. Wherever we apply these, our customers benefit in terms of having a better energy footprint and relating with uh, more of our products are used, uh, less uh, greenhouse gas emission, gas emission are uh, you know, created by our customers. So that's, that's the kind of a power of this portfolio. And the process automation is automation of the energy industries, process industries, which are in the core sector, and also our uh, marine and ports, which are, which are very critical infrastructure for import and exports. And of course, measurement and analytics, which goes into the sensors that are used by the in industry. Now, uh, what we have uh, as a fourth division is the uh, robotics and discrete automation. That's where we uh, we have the uh, we have the uh, you know a division which is delivering automation to increasing appetite of manufacturing industries, which are uh, not only working well uh, but they are they are expanding and their need for applying robotics automation is increasing day by day. And we are seeing very healthy growth and healthy results in this division as well. And also the sophistication, what uh, industry is demanding. We are operating in five manufacturing locations in Maharashtra, Gujarat, um, Haryana, 
and the Karnataka. And we have uh, 25 plants in these manufacturing locations with 28 sales offices across the country to serve them for sales as well as services. And uh, we have an increasing network of our partners who really take us to the different market segments and to the depth of uh, geographies of the, of, of the country. Uh, you may be familiar with this uh, picture. This is our, in short, our strategy to engage with the market. So what we have here is, uh, uh, at the bottom, uh, they could be the smallest contributors but highest growth market segment because they have come into being recently, like uh, data centers, railways and metro, and electronics. These are the in, you know, sectors which are growing very fast, and our in, we are having an increasing uh, contribution into our order books from these market segments because we have product portfolio which serves this uh, market quite well. Uh, so renewables, uh, electronics, metro, um, data center, and railways, they are really tracking uh, positively forward. And when it comes to um, you know the water, wastewater, uh, warehouse logistics, power distribution, building and infrastructure, uh, all these sectors are moderate growth. Uh, moderate growth, when I say it, is between 10 to 15 percent, and those, these uh, are also contributing in a significant way. These are the ones which we may, maybe started engaging middle of last decade, and we have matured these market segments in a significant way, and they are becoming good contributors. Low growth segments, which are traditionally in the core sectors, for example, marine and ports, oil and gas, pharma, healthcare, pulp and paper, cement, they have been muted for a period of time, but now we see many of these market segments have started tracking. The project pipelines have built well. We have a very strong you know, install base in these the market segments, and we service them quite effectively, and, and we have a very strong ongoing relationship here. By the way, though it may be low growth, but it has the highest contribution to our order books. So that means as and when the formation of uh, growth and capex takes place, we get another kick up uh, in these segments. So most of it is led by high growth and moderate growth into our uh, growth uh, from the segment perspective and also our uh, geographical penetration in the market. But the low growth segment, though they call low growth, but they have a substantial contribution. So when they move, they move really well for us. So that's the kind of a constellation uh, we're sitting, and we do see there are some growth triggers which still have to happen for our business as we go forward, despite having very strong growth already into our books in the last many quarters. Now, we are going to cover, like every time we cover a, a segment, uh, we take a deep dive there. So in, in case of India, uh, India aims for 500 gigawatt of renewable energy installed by 2030. And it has been very impressive uh, how we have gone about executing it. We have almost 180 gig gigawatt of installed capacity, wherein it is uh, distributed into different uh, resources, wind power, solar, biomass, small hydro power, waste to energy, large hydro. And there has been 30 times increase in solar power and two times increase in wind power since 2040. So it's very impressive. Uh, you know, I spent quite a bit of time in Europe, especially in Germany, I go back in 2008, 2007, when they were forming strategy. And I could see similar kind of development there, wherein there was a policy, and there was a policy bias towards renewables, and within five to 10 years, they really became leaders uh, in this particular area. So India has a very natural need to expand into renewables, and you can see the government policy is really very well aligned. And I think that's, the, that's something which is a new normal in India, wherein the national policy and the action and the entrepreneurs and the incentives and the long-term vision in this area is all coming together, be it in the uh, form of uh, national green hydrogen mission, PLI, solar PV manufacturing, solar city, solar park, and uh, 30 gigawatt offshore wind. I, we believe this, uh, this, this is something is a long play and we have a very good portfolio to support it. And we sometimes continue to add new, new products, which really de-bottleneck uh, uh, these market segments because when you expand too much, then you require special technology. We continue to pay attention to it, and we also bring in technologies uh, which help and aid in distribution of these power generators. 
Now, with respect to how our growth is coming quarter to quarter, it is totally rooted into how our teams and our businesses engage with customers. We have a very strong engagement strategy with customers. We go deep into the country and across the market segments, be it we are engaging with customers in Mumbai, Kochi, Mahar, Ludhiana, Lucknow, Leh. So this is our secret open recipe for you that it is how we continue to find new customers, get them excited about ABB products and technology and quality and our credentials on sustainability. I think we get a very good response wherever we go and we again have a long runway in the country to reach out to more and more customers on the geographical spread page. Some business highlights for you. Uh, first, on the operational performance, we had a strong operational performance with uh, quarter four. We had orders which were up 35% from both emerging and traditional segments. As I explained to you earlier, it's a mix. Uh, revenues were 14% up. Uh, profit after tax is 13% up. Mostly driven by operational efficiencies and uh, we continue to maintain a strong cash position. Uh, board has recommended a final dividend of 23.8 per share. I think maybe Silver can explain to you a little bit more in terms of where we were and where we have expanded in a very short period of time. I think a lot of, uh, a lot of cash is being directed towards the shareholders and we are very happy to that company together with our shareholders. Okay, uh, so so what we are what we are doing is we are sharing uh, the performance of ABB uh, with our shareholders in terms of expanded uh, uh, dividends. Now on the ESG and customers, uh, we have 50% of the company manufacturing campuses certified as water positive. Just to give you a color to it, Nella Mangla, which was our first plant, which became water positive. That meant we are putting more water in the ground than we are taking it out. About two years back, when we monitor it with an electronic meter, the water levels, uh, and we have invested in technology. Two years ago, we had water depth around our Nella Mangla plant at 60 meters. And one year, one month back when we checked, it had risen to 29 meters. So these positive elements, when you do it consciously, you do it with right technology and you monitor it in good faith and you want to make sure that you succeed, they work. And uh, we, we will have all our manufacturing compasses go to water positive uh, as per our plant. And we have reduced almost 88% in greenhouse gas uh, emission in scope one and scope two with a baseline for 2019. So that shows our commitment and the programs are working and they are well monitored, they're well managed at the central level, but really led by our campus teams uh, or the location team. And all of them are very proud, and our global teams are very proud the kind of achievements ABB India and the businesses have made it here. Because we do it not to impress the world, we do it because all the management team feels is the right thing to do. Uh, for the simple reason, India is a water stress country, India is an energy stress country, India has, uh, uh, you know, kind of a uh, circulation uh, or kind of uh, how we uh, put the waste to the landfill issues. We want to make sure that from our side, we create a minimum footprint on the environmental impact and we create a positive impact in terms of contributing to water tables, contributing to sending uh, no waste to land and also other elements which really contribute uh, to the environment out and also encourage our suppliers, our customers, as well as other partner companies in the areas we are present or the industry forums we uh, represent. Now, we had significant orders uh, in traction, uh, large orders with the steady base orders. Uh, we had the uh, automotive sector performing well for us. And likewise, the process industry, metal, mining, chemical, textile companies, gave us good solu you know, integrated solution orders. And in the transport side, railways and electrification of metros is a net positive for us, and high growth uh, sectors like data centers, electronics, railways, and metro and renewables, these are really tracking very well for us in our order books and our portfolio in all these uh, segments which are tracking well, uh, we have a sweet spot in terms of how we can serve these customers. And with a result, our order backlog grew 
thirty percent to Indian rupees eight thousand four hundred and four crores. So that again gives us a very solid uh, outlook for our revenues going forward. And we have a fairly good mix of for now large orders as well as the uh, you know the base orders uh, that 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 convert rather quickly. Now, when it comes to um, uh, you know the 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 overall impact uh, on our balance sheet, you can see that uh, we have good growth by 23 percent. Backlog has grown by 30 percent. Revenue grew by 23 percent. Operational EBITDA and margin grew by 54 percent. And EPS has grown by 11 percent. Cash has grown by 31 percent. And our GSG emission have gone down by with 2019 base by 88%. So we believe we are tracking the right KPI in the right direction. Return on capital employed is uh, one of the good measures uh, for, for all of us to manage. So you can see compared to 2019 when we had 10%, we are now at 21%. So this is something which is a notable for all of us. And it has grown 110% over this period of time. Now, we get orders uh, across market segments. As we say, we have 18 divisions which connect with about 23 market segments in the market. So it gives you some kind of uh, idea that power distribution package, which comes out of Nashik, where we are sitting, for a data center of IT major. There's a huge expansion of data centers in the country for small, medium, and large size. And ABB product portfolio provides the power supply that the medium voltage and low voltage into it. We have become the core because data center is nothing but uh, a power uh, power uh, consuming uh, block wherein you have servers which require a lot of power and we ABB supplies that power into it. That and globally uh, with the both with the global IT majors as well as uh, majors in the country, we we do get a lot of preference uh, because of our portfolio and our, our ability to execute. A robotic solution for electronic business of a conglomerate. Uh, again, a lot of uh, demand for robotics from us, and new, new, newer applications are being tried out by the customers. And then our traction technology, uh, you know, offering for railways, uh, electric drive automation for a leading integrated metals and mining company, our distributed control system, uh, you know, for specialty company, vacuum circuit breaker for uh, solar and wind projects. Uh, these are a few highlights of some of the applications. On our green credentials, you can see all our units are now green certified units, mostly planet, planet platinum, uh, and uh, our scope one and two GSG emission are down, as I mentioned before, to about 87, 88%. Energy productivity is up 65%. Water recyclability is 45%. 50% of our units are, uh, you know, water positive, and we already one unit has become zero waste to landfill, and we will convert other units also. And the picture you see on the left is our real picture of our plant in the in Bangalore. This is not a stock picture from internet. So we really pay attention for our green uh, consciousness. So when you visit any of our plants, you will see a lot of green conscious in among, among how our campuses are managed. We continue to uh, make sure part of our value system of care, we have a meaningful and impactful um, uh, you know, CSR project, an external agency reviewed our project. We got very good scores in terms of impact and our ability to uh, create a positive uh, movement into all the projects wherein we are uh, focused. So, be it in the infrastructure, women education, water, and, and providing really medical equipment for cancer patients. So, uh, we, we make small contribution in our, in our way, given the uh, amount of contribution can be done, uh, but we are happy to engage with what we do. And we are also very happy that our earnings are increased. I mean, they have doubled in the last few years. That means our CSR budget also has doubled in proportion. So that gives us even more capacity to serve society as we go forward. So on the financial highlights, uh, now I pass it on to my colleague uh, T.K. Sirza to take you through this. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Sanjeev. So, if I take this opportunity to take you, take you through the performance numbers. I think this is more focused on how we have performed in uh, Q4 22 and also some snapshots of the full year. 
So orders, we closed at um, uh, 3,147 crores for the quarter, which is 35 percentage above the previous year, the same year, uh, same quarter. And of course, this also included a large order from the projects and the uh, systems in the division from traction uh, on the business, which is a one-time um, order. So and then we have an order backlog of 8,400 crores, and um, uh, this is an all-time high because we had uh, um, good order intake in this particular year, which is um, <coughs> almost a uh, uh, 23 percentage um, growth of for the full year. And this has definitely resulted in an order backlog of 8,400 crores, which gives a better visibility of uh, uh, revenues for the future. So this is something which every one of you will understand. Right? And uh, when it comes to the uh, <coughs> profitability, we are uh, 454 crores for the quarter with 13 uh, percentage up on the uh, profitability compared to previous year and also on the fund uh, pad uh, a similar 13 percentage which are there. But if you look at the full year, we are uh, definitely up on the profit after tax by 22 percentage and uh, this is uh, in spite of the fact that last year uh, included an exceptional income of uh, 300, uh, 339 crores. Um, <coughs> Uh, for the sale of turbocharger business to Acceleron, and and this therefore this year represents a pure operational performance which has improved um, uh, substantially than what it was in the previous year. So I mean uh, when, uh, I mean so where did this basically how did this happen? I think it's more about uh, uh, the quality of the orders, uh, operating efficiencies, uh, capacities which are utilized now to a quite a good extent and also definitely supported by a positive price uh, movement uh, which contributed to the profitability. And uh, none, uh, last but not the least also, because now our portfolio is pretty straightforward, all product businesses, so our predictability of profitability in execution and also a good orientation towards service is really helping us to uh, um, become um, move into these particular ranges what we are seeing. Right? So, and uh, uh, the next is around uh, cash. Uh, cash, we are at 4,700 crores, that's why we are It is all, it is also reflected by the fact that um, all the net income which we have generated over the years, our conversion ratios to cash has definitely uh, improved and we are trying to make sure that every profitability, every profit which we earn is reflected into cash. <coughs> So this is just to uh, uh, give you more details about it. So orders received, we discussed 35 percent for the quarter. Revenues we grew 14, and for the full year 22, um, a profit and operational EBITDA is somewhere and a pretty solid about from how we ought to do it. So one point which I would like to bring to your attention is that if we remove the so-called one-off items of the last year, which is of the uh, um, uh, <coughs> sale of project and the order business, so our growth is almost 400 basis points in the margin level. So just to give you a bit of a more color on how did we um, perform in the uh, <clears throat> in the structure of the profitability, right? So here, if you look at it, I think um, uh, <clears throat> our material cost is at about 62.6. This is probably an, uh, a very comfortable area where we are in the range where we are in. So I think we have been the, the teams have been consistently um, working on localization on improving the mix of the uh, businesses, what they are executing, and also making sure that we don't have any profit leakages during the execution of the uh, orders what we have. Right? And um, uh, just to mention, if, uh, if someone is curious about what is other income, other income majority of them, almost 70 crores, represents the um, uh, interest on the fixed deposits what we hold. And uh, that's something which uh, is meant because you have a cash which is there, and we are allowed to invest only in absolutely secure and safe securities, and which is the bank criminal deposits and the other uh, related instruments is where we gain this particular interest. So personal expenses, we have uh, holding on to 6.5% uh, um, uh, for the quarter and 6.8% for the full year compared to 7.4% uh, last year. And this is the majority coming out of the fact of uh, um, uh, increasing productivity and making sure that we are uh, <clears throat> I believe employing people over here. Then uh, coming to the, um, the, I think the one element which probably uh, is not uh, largely under the control of the business is about the exchange and commodity variation. So this is 10.5 crores negative compared to the 3 crore positive in immediately succeeding quarter 
and 30 mil, 30 crores positive in the last quarter of the same period last year. So I think the swing is around about 40 crores. So this is something which we'll also see in the waterfall chart, which is already executed and it's already concluded, included in the next slide. Differentiation, I think we have been investing consistently in the um, modernization of the factories, expansion and sort of stuff. So that's, uh, that's probably uh, increasing uh, the depreciation, but that is for a good cause and that supplement that the ROC still stands at 21 percent. That's what we have to do. <clears throat> Interest cost is um, uh, 8 crores at this point of time for the quarter and uh, uh, this is this is more uh, related to the um, MSME vendors, what we have to approve the interest and sort of stuff which we have and, um, uh, and also uh, <clears throat> to be mindful of the fact that um, uh, this is something which we make sure that we have a straight dealing with for the MSME and uh, um, we pay them on time. We make sure that we have a no large interest cost that's going over there. So, and our, our uh, um, effective tax rate stands at 25 percentage, that's what you would have seen. So, and, uh, so now I think in this quarter, probably the six months and the full year, we decided that we would give more detail in the press release, and that's something which we have been um, uh, published in this uh, in this quarter as well because it's been the year. <coughs> This is about talking about what's the waterfall. So if you look at it, we had a, a favorable volume impact and a mix impact which contributed to the accretion of the profit and uh, which slightly definitely compensating the um, uh, increase in expenses, absolute values and also the forex which is there and still uh, we did manage to get to the numbers which was a considerably credible number as what we see. So now just, just doing a bit of a deep dive into how we see the um, uh, business-wise performance. So this is pretty uh, interesting as I see that how business is evolving. So electrification growing at almost 1,000 crore every quarter in terms of order booking. And uh, they grew on about 20, um, 24 percentage for the quarter um, uh, from the previous year. And then, um, uh, of course, um, and then, um, electrification being a thought cycle businesses, we could see the conversion of the orders put into revenues as well. And that probably uh, um, has a healthy impact on the profitability, uh, which is there in the top PBIT chart below. And their order backlog has increased by 24% compared to the previous year. So they have a good short-term visibility of revenues uh, going forward. And I think um, the orders may also constitute from um, um, uh, new growing sectors like uh, um, <clears throat> like the data centers, OEMs, and major metals and energy players. So now the motion. So motion, I think motion is um, represented by motor, system drive, um, uh, the services division about it, and also the traction. So we did definitely book large orders in Q3 and Q4 from uh, the traction uh, business. So that is reflected in the large orders which is there. So, and uh, this also gives us a good visibility of uh, um, orders, uh, uh, revenues going forward. Um, and uh, <clears throat> the I think the profitability, I think, um, uh, could be a bit of an explanation which I need to do in terms of how uh, from 19.4 to 17.4. I think if you look at the forex impact, which we mentioned earlier, so this is something which has um, uh, impacted uh, on motion because they have a quite a bit of imports which they do when it comes to drive and drive product and system drive and that's something which has impacted them and I think this is more temporary in nature it will settle down uh, in the average uh, rates what has already been depicted over here. So, uh, <clears throat> so I think order backlog um, even though it looks pretty impressive around 3500 crores we need to understand because it's got a um, uh, system order a large component, it gets executed over the next uh, um, 24 to 24 months and so that's something which we should be aware of. It's not an, um, uh, like an unlike electrification where it will get executed in the immediate quarters. Motion, I think they have been having a consistent run and uh, they are more projects per uh, focus so they are a bit cyclical sometimes and so uh, but that's why therefore you could see a slight dip in the um, uh, order intake numbers. And revenue is definitely driven by the order backlog what they have. They have got good execution patterns and we see no, uh, uh, no margin slippages in the projects what they've executed. But good part is that they have a consistent um, um, order booking which comes from the installed base. That means the services revenues are consistently increasing. That's what we see. And uh, here also in the PBIT, if you look at it, uh, they're uh, probably the um, 
uh, <coughs> they were also impacted by the negative forest impact what they had. Um, <coughs> the robotics, I, uh, the robotics, I think uh, they were uh, they they missed certain orders in Q4, but they would definitely uh, when, uh, when uh, I mean going forward we see the pipeline stronger, so they would be able to make it up as our run rate going forward as well. The revenues are consistently increasing with the backlog what is there with them and uh, PBIT we are they are at 12 percent days and that's more from because they have the disorders which is also good in the uh, 70 years. So overall if you look at the um, often uh, the how we are structured I think this is something slide which you would be all familiar with. So products constitute 78, 76 percent days for the burden of the, uh, of the revenues and 12 percentage from the services and projects probably 10 percentage. And uh, the next slide is pretty interesting as to, uh, if you look at the um, um, composition of the, geog I mean, the demography of the, uh, uh, or, I mean, of the revenues, uh, today we are talking of 90 percentage of our revenues from the domestic market and 10 percentage coming from the exports. So this doesn't mean that exports are falling down. This only means that the domestic market is expanding more faster than an, um, uh, uh, than the export uh, export uh, market as such. But if we take an absolute value of uh, uh, the uh, growth in the exports, right? So we are almost make, making more than um, uh, 30 to 15 percent growth, which is pretty decent compared uh, considering the um, uh, the crime, uh, the uh, <coughs> the sort of vagaries which we have in the different global markets. But whereas when it comes to India, it really reflects the uh, investment momentum which is happening in India, which always is growing faster than the global market. So this is basically how we see the structure of the business models in terms of our offerings. And uh, if we go to just roll it forward, so because what is it we see in store for 2024? I think there are two topics. One is the grow, um, what is going to drive the growth. Other one is what are the factors which we definitely have to monitor. So I think um, from the growth factors, I think we think definitely investment in the private sector will, um, along with the public sector, will drive growth. I think all of us believe that the private uh, public spend will happen, investment will happen, and so this will definitely propel the growth. And uh, the compound like the um, the, pro the nation led programs like Make in India, and this is also going to really help uh, the investment patterns in India, and this is also will also help us focus on the local content which is there. And the next important factor, which is uh, we have so far not talked talked about it in the past, but we see that this is a trend which is uh, visible in the market is about premiumization. That means the affordability for quality products from the consumer from the from the consumers of the have increased, and that therefore um, uh, and, uh, the quality products or technology and uh, advanced products, technologically advanced products, is something. Uh, which the customers will start to prefer, and therefore uh, we expect that's a sweet spot for ABB going forward. Having said that, there are definitely certain key factors to monitor. Um, um, I think all of us know that inflation and higher interest rates will be a um, item to monitor because that impacts the uh, the so-called OEMs and the small vendors. Because we are talking um, of the fact that we are exposed to quite a bit about the tier two, tier three cities, which is our breadwinner at this point of time and they could be impacted. So this is something which we think as a uh, parameter which we need to watch out for. And uh, uh, consumption growth, uh, which is also driven by the rural demand, is, uh, is definitely another factor to uh, consider in the um, growth patterns what we see. And uh, last but not the least, what we have in this particular year, uh, several um, countries in the, in the world are going for election. And India also will see an election period in Q2. So there could be certain, uh, while we believe that there could be certain delay in decisions, uh, but we see that the fundamentals are in place. So that having said that, I think we expect that we will have a positive momentum as what we see in this moment of time. So this is probably my uh, last slide. So I think uh, with this, we could open up the session for uh, more questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to only use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles.
We have a first question from the line of Renu Bed Bugalia from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon and um, congratulations for strong performance. Uh, my first question is um, a little bit more um, basic. Uh, typically, if you look from a trend perspective, fourth quarter tends to be uh, far more lumpier and better in terms of sequential revenue growth. And given that a backlog has been strong, let's put from your side why this quarter was broadly flattish and not a growth on a QOQ basis, specifically for EL and uh, MO, both which are product-oriented portfolio for us. So any revenue slippages, delays, uh, or any specific comments from your side? So, uh, <clears throat> so, Renu, so from my side, I could say there has been no revenue slippages. I think uh, the uh, in terms of uh, there is no destocking um, issues also which we see from the uh, um, channel partners or a customer side as well. I think what we see is more about a meaningful execution according to the milestones and the offtake of the customers, which is very important. I think if you look at the patterns previously when we are coming out from the COVID uh, scenario, and I think people try to execute whatever was required uh, at that point of time as a backlog which they had to do. So therefore, the offtake was far faster um, in the previous uh, quarter but now it has started to stabilize, right? So that means it's going to be more even uh, in a way which matches with the execution of the uh, various projects with the OEMs and channel partners have. And that's basically what we see both in electrification as well as motion. Got it. Uh, and um, secondly, if you look at directionally, uh, while we have been guiding or we have been broadly mentioning of uh, maintaining double-digit net margins now, uh, this year has been uh, pretty strong uh, with combination of factors, mix, as well as um, about the gain side in terms of benefits. Um, so looking at the backlog that we have in hand, uh, what is the outlook uh, that you would like to share for the next calendar year, uh, especially on the profitability, uh, given the way uh, um, the macros and uh, your order backlog is uh, tied up today? Uh, Renu, we don't share outlook. That's, I think, that we uh, know. Right? So I think I could only give a color to that. Our order backlog is a good mix of um, orders from uh, the 23 market segments, what we cater to. And also it has an element of good amount of services, which is also um, a service again. And But the other factor which we need to consider is 90% is from domestic market. Right, So that means uh, a content which is basically more driven by the local prices, local competition sort of stuff. So I think given this particular scenario and we have and major event of an uh, election which will happen in Q2, I think we should be uh, realistically cautious when we um, give an estimation about these uh, uh, profitability uh, indicators. So given that we are at the double digit margin at this point of time, I think our ambition is to make sure that we are remain credible over here. Sure. And last question, more related to the uh, end markets. Um, if you see, electronics has been one of the key growth drivers for um, ABB. And now with uh, deepening of presence in OSAD and the entire value chain, there will be more factory automation opportunities. Uh, so how are we looking at this market unfolding? Um, and have we already started to see um, activities from customers in terms of inquiries in this segment? Um, so how should we look at uh, both in terms of opportunities on the manufacturing side and electronics in specific um, going forward? Yeah, Sanjeev here, Sanjeev Sharma. <clears throat> Definitely electronics is a segment wherein we see positive development. But not only we see the formation of CapEx and expansion, we see direct impact in our order books. And we are delivering meaningful projects in electronic sector. Uh, and uh, and also the, the nature of electronic manufacturing is now, especially when more modern plants are being, because every time an electronic manufacturing plant is set up by a global major or local, they always go for new technology. So robotics automation is one element that go uh, quite well uh, into, into these manufacturing, and we are seeing a good uptake uh, in that uh, part of our portfolio. And in, an, in, in addition, when you have these integrated facilities come, you have other uh, related products of ABV from electrification, motion, also find place uh, in these uh, facilities. So definitely we see an uptake and positive uptake of electronic segment. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to answer queries from all participants, please restrict your questions to two at a time. You may join back the queue for follow-up questions. The next question is from the line of Mohit Kumar from ICICI Security. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. I am congratulated on a very, very good quarter and a very good year. My first question is on the order, order inflow. Was there a large order inflow in this particular quarter, like last quarter, biggest quarter? And the related question is, is the life cycle of the current order book, is it very different from the uh, order book at the end of CY22? Uh, <clears throat> so Mohit, can you repeat the last question? So I will answer your question. That's not an issue. So what is the life cycle of the current order book at the end of CY23? And is it materially different from the a life cycle at the end of CY22. Uh, uh, so, answer to your two questions. The first question is, did it have a large order? Answer to it, yes, it did have a large order. I had mentioned that it had uh, basically come from motion, from a traction business, from a railways customer. So, that's number one. And number two, what's the composition looking like of the order backlog? I think it's a uh, good question. I think earlier we used to have, um, um, from the order backlog, uh, probably uh, seven, seven, eight percentage as uh, a large order content, as a project order, in other words. But in the current order uh, in, uh, composition, order backlog, from 8,400 crores, we have almost 15 percentage from the large orders. So these large orders get executed over a period of 18 to 24 months, depending upon uh, the project what we're executing, and uh, the balance get executed uh, over a period of time with the predictable revenues. You said 15, right, sir? 15. 1.5, yeah. Work time, just two. So my second question on the gross margin. Our gross margin was the highest in the in this particular fiscal and this particular quarter. How do you think about as you go forward, especially for CY24, do you think any gross margin correction? I think last quarter you alluded that there is some correction. Uh, so, first of all, Mohit, we don't give any forecast as far as gross margin is concerned. So, gross margin is basically resultant of three to uh, two to three factors. One, of course, the composition of the orders what we execute, and if that has an, um, uh, uh, a larger element of um, uh, project orders which get executed, as you see that we have already mentioned that 15 percentage are large orders. Um, so I think that will have a lesser contribution to the uh, gross margin, but whereas the product order definitely has. So I think as the prices are stabilizing in the uh, uh, in the market, both in terms of uh, um, uh, pricing which we do with the customer as well as with the vendors, with the steel and the material prices uh, stabilizing, I think the um, uh, the possibility of increasing the prices into the market will be more even based and not a normal pattern, right? So that's how it will happen. So more more expansions in the margins will come through capacities, through um, different market segments, what we uh, go into and value-based selling, right? So that's basically how the margin expansion going forward will happen. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Ankur Sharma from HDFC Life. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for your time. So I had two questions. Uh, one was on the motor business, the motion business, that is. Uh, you know, just wanted your comments on you know, how are you seeing the competitive intensity, pricing, uh, and also demand there because, you know, one of your fears is says, uh, you know, uh, there almost seems to be like a price war going on uh, in that, especially on the low voltage uh, motors. Uh, uh, you know, so one. So that's my first question. Second was uh, on the automation uh, segment. Uh, you know, while Qfo has been uh, seen uh, you know, good growth, overall uh, order inflow seems to be flattish on a YOY basis. Uh, so is it uh, that some orders are kind of got deferred? And you probably think that should pick up over the coming quarters, or maybe it's more like post-election. So you have some comments there as well. So your question about process automation, yes, our pipeline is quite strong, and there are certain orders we feel uh, got deferred, and they will come in course of time, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, most likely in this quarter. Uh, when it comes to terms like price wars and others, I think we never use this kind of uh, terminology within our own internal system because that shows an erratic behavior of someone. 
and uh, we stay quite steady with respect to how we serve our channels and our customers with a more consistency over a period of time. Uh, so never, never, uh, our pricing strategies are very stable based on how the market and the market segment show up based on the strength of our portfolio. But yes, if there is a, some kind of a, a behavior in the market, so it's not the whole segment gets affected. There may be a kind of a, a stress in a particular market segment on the lower side wherein it is more price sensitive. So that's how that's how we deal with it. I do have uh, my colleague, uh, the president of Motion Division, Sanjeev Arora. Sanjeev, would you like to add to my comments? So, <clears throat> thank you very much for the question. Thank you, Sanjeev, for uh, giving me this opportunity to answer it. I think um, you are uh, just spot on. And uh, definitely, <clears throat> as Sridhar has also mentioned, it is the value-based selling. It is the portfolio and the technological advantage what we have. Uh, mm. That is playing very well for ABB low voltage motors. And uh, the customer has the belief that uh, if they are going for uh, the sustainability as a subject on top of their mind, uh, it is the energy efficient motors of ABB which can support them very well. And that's how we are keeping ourselves a bit more isolated and protected from the uh, from the uh, I would say the general trend, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's our strategy will be going forward as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sanjeev. Very good. Okay. okay, thank you. Very helpful. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Amit Mahavar from UBS Group. Please go ahead. Hi. Um, thank you. Congratulations, uh, Sanjeev and Sridhar, for uh, excellent execution on reach, product, and localization. Sir, my first question is on um, the motion division. Um, this year, almost 50 billion plus worth of orders, um, right, uh, the largest subset for us, and that's more driven by traction. CY24, um, how should we look about um, traction orders? Um, you know, uh, do you think uh, we'll have the same momentum? Uh, any color on that? As far as uh, traction orders are concerned, it's a direct result of spend being made in the railways uh, and in the in the metro segment. In railways, uh, specifically in terms of the new trains being launched, we have a substantial technology footprint in those uh, areas because. Of it. So uh, let me repeat. So with respect to uh, traction, our market segment, forward market segment segments are railways and metro and within railways it is the new trains like one day Marath and more modern trains uh, wherein our technology is a sweet spot technology for those segments they are preferred technology but we participate with the railway tendering process or through the OEMs who are building those trains and we have good position there and uh, and also in the engines, the railway electric engines, so I think when they uh, are buying and expanding that line, we also have some technologies going there. And in the metro, of course, we supply substantial amount of technology there. So these segments are tracking. So yes, it is cyclic. Not every quarter you have a very large tender, but whenever large tender happens, because the OEM wins, and then the OEM takes their time to place their offload of uh, the ABB technology orders to us. So I would say I would consider it as an engineer to order uh, business, but it will be more cyclic going forward. We will not track it quarter to quarter. We will track it as it comes. Fair point, Sanjeev. And second question is on the EL division. Um, our profitability has seen a material ramp up and it's more close to the global peer like Schneider operating in India at 80-90% plus. Um, but there is a significant gap in top line. I'm not saying, you know, we have all the product portfolio, but our top line vis-a-vis, -vis, say, a Schneider in India is materially different. So which are the areas where ABB will expand and target in the EL division in terms of product profile? That's it. Thank you. So I let me admit my ignorance because we never track our competitors. We only... Uh, track uh, what we can do for our customers with our portfolio. So I maybe it will not be able to relate with the percentages you said. But yes, relative to our quarter to quarter, year to year uh, performance and the market and the customer segment we want to do, I think we continue to make very strong progress. So we are quite happy with what our distribution ELDS 
company is doing as well as how our business in smart power and smart distribution are uh, working. Uh, and I think we are on track in terms of localization, in terms of penetration, expanding our product portfolio, and we are making substantial, uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of investments in that area. Uh, do we compare with somebody? No. I think if we haven't done that. Maybe it's a good question from you. Maybe we should look at it. But at this point of time, I think we are going by our plan. Fair, but at least LVMV, which side is ABB leaning towards in terms of expansion, sir, if some color? Last year, we expanded quite well on the medium voltage side in Nashik. You may have attracted, and uh, uh, Ganesh, since he's sitting uh, next to me, I can take benefit of him. What do you think on the medium voltage side? What kind of opportunities do you see, Ganesh? Yeah, thanks for giving the opportunity, Sanjeev. So, uh, medium voltage, uh, definitely we did uh, the expansion in the last year. Uh, we brought our eco-friendly uh, uh, product line uh, which has been introduced and also a couple of other uh, products which is uh, from the contractor side also has been introduced. Uh, so uh, there is an expansion which is in the product portfolio that has also been done and also investment which has been done in basically the uh, capacity expansion uh, to meet the demand uh, in the market. So I, we can see a very good demand which is coming from the renewable building and also rail and infrastructure uh, yeah. segment. Uh, and of course the data center uh, uh, because it is very highly uh, energy uh, intensive usage uh, which is coming from the data center. So we we do see uh, this uh, good expansion is coming and uh, we have seen the good growth uh, uh, in the last uh, quarter also when it comes to the distribution sector. So in short, what Ganesh is leading, we have a very solid performance. It's a, I think our benchmark is how we, well we do as ABB globally and I think uh, uh, ELDS or our division really is on the top of the benchmark uh, globally when it comes to uh, the business performance and also the growth. Uh, when it comes to low voltage, uh, we have Kiran on call. Yeah. Kiran, would you like to put some color on it? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Sanjir. Uh, from the low voltage perspective, I think you also made certain points in terms of localization and expansion of our portfolio. I think we have been uh, doing that continuously uh, over the past few years. We have added some products which are addressing different segments of the market, not only uh, the segments what we were already having. Uh, we are also trying to get into different segments of the market as well. And uh, one is uh, in terms of the portfolio expansion where we talk about, the rest is, is also important uh, when we talk about the localization part of it. So overall, um, it's um, in two ways where we look at it. Uh, one, uh, while expanding the portfolio, we want also want to introduce those products into India as a localization part of it. Let me give you an example in one of the segments of data centers. Uh, we also launched some uh, solutions on the UPS side. So that's been um, uh, launched in the last quarter uh, of um, last year, that's Q4 of 2023. So a good uh, portfolio in the very particular segment of the market called data centers. Uh, and that kind of portfolio will support us in future growth. So overall, we continue to expand the portfolio as well as localization. Thank you. Thank you, Kiran. Thank you, Sanjeev. Thank you, Kiran. Good luck. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Umesh Raut from Nomura, India. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is pertaining to your opening remarks about premiumization. So basically, it is uh, really heartening to see that there is a shift now happening at a ground level to more towards premium addition. But uh, I want to I kind of understand more uh, on the uh, vertical side, basically, in which all products uh, you are seeing this particular shift happening and how this can also lead to uh, further uh, better real addition for the company. Hmm. Mr. Rao, uh, thank you for your question. It's a good one. Uh, I think we have seen this significant shift of customer behavior, especially post-COVID, because uh, I would say during COVID period, customers realized that when they are in dire straits, which are the companies which stand for them and which are the one and has the ability to serve them. Obviously, companies like ABB stood very tall during that period, the way we were organized to help our customers who were in the remote location with our digital technologies, digital support technologies, and we didn't left any customer wanting. 
relative to maybe not so great experience they had with their during their critical phases uh, with some of the uh, other other participants in the marketplace and i believe that has created a strong impression in customers mind and i do believe that has a large contribution in terms of how customers started thinking about reliability availability and the overall strength of the company so that's one reason we find now apart from the market growth the organic market growth there's a shift of the preference for a, a large customer which was very uh, kind of price sensitive earlier towards more uh, reliable supplier and they're willing to pay uh, a reasonable price for the products and the quality and the services they get from company like us so that's a we we could measure it but we find that there's a substantial shift on top of the market growth itself so that's why you can see our growth numbers are relatively multiple of the gdp growth in the country it is being contributed uh, by by that behavior as well now when it comes to the verticals we definitely see that very clearly in robotics we see that very clearly in the uh, a grade buildings which are being built and the infrastructure projects being built whether our electrification and motion products there's a clear preference for those products from us the people are demanding it by brand that what brand they would like to place in when they have that flexibility and not only that even the uh, contractors who are working in very prestigious government projects uh, they want to make sure they are using the best technologies and components because now the government infrastructure projects are so high such a high quality whether it's a parliament or it is ayodhya airport railway station raman there you will find abb technology footprint there because there is a preference that they should put best in class equipment so that it means it's not only the government procurement which says to buy the cheapest they are saying buy the best for the best infrastructure we are putting in and that's our sweet spot and that's where our brand the place the placement is quite good so in the electrification all these areas uh, premiumization is taking place data centers again when our the large players uh, who are the large global players when they are coming to india they have a choice to buy cheap but they don't they come and they buy our premium technologies because the data center is all about reliability availability for the customers and uh, they want to ensure the best of technology goes uh, there so that's another area where we see a distinct advantage and especially on the sustainability side we find the industry behavior has changed cement industry steel industry pulp and paper there is a lot of demand for high quality products which reduces their greenhouse cause a uh, green green uh, greenhouse gas uh, uh, emissions by using technologies which give them more efficiency same thing with the contractors which are building residential building uh, commercial buildings they also have a preference for high technology and they they buy it by name or sometimes they buy exclusively and we had a just this week example we are executing a i will not name the customer uh, they placed an order 3 months back and without our asking they repeated that order by sending an email to us to listen hey i am setting up another project just please repeat it so that's the kind of a behavior we think people are uh, using uh, in order to because the amount of money they are spending for their project is so high they don't want to compromise on the last uh, component by uh, which used to be behavior earlier but they we see a mark shift there and it's a it's a sweet spot for us i hope that answers you mr rao yes sir very much uh, so my next question is pertaining to exports and services business so if i look at our trajectory i think overall at a company level we are doing very good in terms of growth but as a percentage of share in terms of uh, services and exports uh, that has kind of marginally remained same or uh, marginally declined as compared to last uh, cy22 so any any particular color on this front especially now that uh, you are saying uptake on the a uh, renewable side globally and uh, there might be a chance of uh, getting better sourcing from parent side as well especially on these lines uh, as far as uh, services are concerned we are growing well and uh, exports by percentage may look low, low but in net terms we are growing 15% there uh, but since the domestic market is so strong when it moves percentage wise you will see that the exports and the services look uh kind of relatively on percentage are low but we have a healthy growth in that area and we are quite happy 
Now, as a multinational corporation working in India, investing in India, localizing for India, our prime focus is Indian market. That's why we are here, and that's why we want to help the Indian customers. And since we have sophisticated factories, I don't drive the export business. My business leaders don't drive uh, export business. What they drive is they run best-in-class operations, which are so attractive for our global business leaders that they want to buy from here and some other markets. Uh, I think that's how we treat it. So we are finding increasing interest from the global business leaders who manage other markets. Either they are giving the allocation to our factories to supply into markets, or they are even asking our uh, domestic leaders to be responsible for other markets. So we see that this will be a, a kind of a long-term uh, trend wherein we will have more and more participation in global market, but that's not the focus we have. We have the focus on the domestic market, and I believe that's something which will be very rewarding and is rewarding at the moment, and export will be a consequence on the side of it. Understood, sir. sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraints, we request you to restrict to one question, please. The next question is from the line of Mahesh Bendre from LIC Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Sir, last four quarters, uh, we have been reporting order inflow of around 3,000 crores uh, on around that number. Mm -hmm. The base effect is going to come up uh, from next quarter onwards. So, uh, is it fair to assume that we will continue to grow, but the growth rate won't be like 30% growth that what we were reporting for last many quarters? Yeah, I think it's a fair uh, point. Uh, <clears throat> so, I think uh, we we grew from a smaller base to a more solid base at this point of time, which now consists of both um, base orders as well as large orders. So I think it depends on how fast the uh, um, large orders get, uh, <coughs> you know, uh, decided in the future as well. So having said that, I think our focus is basically make sure that our base orders are as strong as what it was in the past. And so that's how uh, we would like to look at it. Sure. And sir, uh, Mr. Bendre, I request you to join back the queue, please, as we have other participants waiting. Sure. Thank you. We request participants to restrict to one question, please. The next question is from the line of Aditya Mongia from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Um, hello, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity and your time. Uh, I'm kind of picking up a comment uh, that you made earlier about integrated solutions uh, becoming more and more relevant. And if I'm not wrong, you had also just announced an order with Tata Steel, which is you know, more integrated across their plants. Could you give us a sense of uh, how meaningful this, uh, let's say, a different line of work can become for you, your positioning inside, the kind of boost to margins, if any, that can come from here? Thank you. Operator, do we have GNV on the phone? GNV Subaru. Uh, I'll have to check, sir. No, no, we don't have. It. Okay. So as far as, uh, as you said, the four sector orders are concerned, uh, we always have good, healthy orders from here. Even if then the CapEx was not as high, we were having very good OPEX orders, wherein there's, a, there's always an expansion or two which keeps happening. But uh, now what we find uh, that, yes, those uh, tick up uh, in certain market segments have started happening, and then we are seeing the uh, growth in these uh, uh, core sectors. Uh, they are a good and uh, large contributor to our uh, orders, uh, and we we see that as this uh, momentum takes place, I think it will meaningfully contribute to the weighted averages we have going forward. But you're right, uh, there is an uptake on the projects business, and that's what we have been talking about in many quarter calls. That, that you know that is something is a matter of time when that it picks up and starts contributing even more meaningfully. And that's where our mix of products, ETO, and the projects start becoming. Uh, such that our projects take uh, a longer time to execute, but at the same time, still our 70, 74 percent of the, uh, you know, the volumes of the revenue mix still comes out of uh, products and the ETO business. Thank you. Thank you, first one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Parikshit Kanpal from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Sanjeev and Sridhar for a great quarter. 
So I have a question on your online marketplace. So uh, you've been talking it for many quarters in the past. So if you can help us and understand over the last couple of years, how has been the ramp up from that in terms of contribution towards the revenues, market share gain, etc. Okay, uh, Kiran, uh, would you like to take it? And uh, Sanjeev, if you have any comment uh, on top of it. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Sanjeev. Um, uh, I think e-marketplace has been quite good in India now. It's uh, gaining traction over a period of time. Uh, as of, uh, if I just compare what it was in 2022 and what it is in 2023, we see a substantial increase in the offtake from the customers on the portal. There's also something known as, we call it as repo, research online and purchase offline. I think that has been a game changer for all of us. We find that a lot of customers research the product, find the technicality, kind of find out what are the specifications and a lot of technical data which is available online. And they would like to purchase offline. So we allow that to happen and that's something which we see is a tremendous uh, growth going forward. Uh, there is also an uh, important aspect that being digital is actually reaching out to many customers across the country. So that is something on a penetration level, it is really supporting us. And it is also easy for a customer to connect with ABB because of this particular portal. So we see a lot of uh, inputs coming up, a lot of leads coming up from, from this because of this portal. So that's the way the development is. And we feel that this particular business uh, going forward will definitely uh, be at exponential level. That's it from my side. Uh, maybe Sanjeev Arora, if you have some comments. Uh, thank you, Kiran. I think, uh, Kiran, you have touched upon all the important aspects of uh, this piece. Uh, this, I would say this is in a nascent stage and developing. And this would be one of the very important revenue streams in times to come and will definitely support the reach and response time, uh, what customer requires. So, yeah, we are very, very much uh, uh, bullish about this piece. Thank you. So, Malik, to give you some, you know, data because I think you got you guys required data, so I am more yeah. to give you some data, right? So, I think out of the total orders, what we have, I think only at this point of time, from my e-commerce as an uh, value revenue an order stream or revenue stream, I think we are very nascent as what uh, um, um, Sanji was uh, alluding to. So, I think we are just a couple of percentages there. So, I think we are. Um, the market is yet to catch up on that particular journey, but we expect that this could uh, grow uh, and grow quite uh, faster in the <clears throat> in the periods to come. And that's something which we are investing on at this point of time. And in this process, we're also making sure that the problem in internal processes like our uh, order management system and the other related uh, customer interfaces are also upgraded to talk seamlessly on this particular, um, you know, technical solution. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Sagar Gandhi from Invesco Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Gandhi, you. you're not sounding clear, sir. Yeah, uh, am I clear now? Yes, yes. go ahead. It is on the renewable, it is this opportunity. I'm sorry, day. you're sounding muffled. Can you also talk about this? That are there in your positioning there? We are not able to hear you get your question clearly, so probably you could write it out and we could uh, answer it. That's not an issue. Hello, M. Hello, M. No, sir, you're sounding muffled. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take that as the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to Mr. T.K. Sridhar for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Shishvi, and thank you, everyone, for joining this particular call, this being the year-end and also the last quarter of the uh, uh, result quarter. Right, So we thought we should uh, try to answer as much as possible. So with that, uh, um, <clears throat> in our efforts, we also increase the time. Right, so we sort of elongated to another by 15 minutes that we uh, call. So I hopefully, I'm, I am hopeful that this could have answered quite a few questions of yours. In case if you still have certain things which you need clarification, please do feel free to contact us back and we will try our best to revert back to you soon. 
thank you very much for joining this call once again and looking forward to uh, seeing you for the, uh, the AGM if wherever is possible, which is in May. Right, Sandeep? Yeah. So, <coughs> very good and uh, <coughs> thank you for all the support, all the um, uh, sort of an uh, understanding of what ABB is. So, it has been a great journey for both Sanjeev and me since for the last five, six years and that is also reflected in the uh, confidence which the uh, shareholders have in the performance of the organization and the results at share price. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. On behalf of ABB India, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your line.